Hello, I'm back and I'm excited to talk to you. I'm hungry to talk to you. I want to talk to you about this thing called life and where we are and some things that I've been thinking about. This is Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy, Les Brown. As, as George Wallace, the comedian, would say, I be thinking. <laughs> So I said, you know what? I, I was reminded of something and I've been talking about it a lot. When you ask about what's going on in the world today and I constantly say that evil prevails when good men and women do nothing. And there's a lot of evil going on and divisiveness and confusion and anxiety around the coronavirus and all type of politics being played out with that and mixed messages about being safe and what's working and what's not working it's it's it can create a great deal of anxiety now we're told be anxious for nothing well easier said than done <laughs> so i want to i want to ask you a question what are you looking at during this time we want to keep social distancing but during this time, it's an incredible time to focus on how do you turn the disadvantages into an advantage. Incredible time. While the majority of people are being distracted, that you keep social distancing, but you focus on reflecting and looking at your life. I was talking to a friend and I said, tell me about the major taking place major things taking place in your life. And she said, well, let me tell you something, a blessing that came out of the coronavirus. I said, what? She said, when they said there was a lockdown, I said, where are the papers? I'm getting a divorce. <laughs> she said, I'm up and I'm out of here. People have been making some major changes in their lives during the lockdown that before they were just tolerating things. But then... But they decided, wait a minute, I'm limited at where I could go and I got to be up in here, up in here with this craziness? No, I'm out of here. <laughs> it's amazing. And so I want you to think about some goals and things that you want to do right now because this is a golden age. This is a great time. Now just think about this. I, I used to travel all over the world and I remember coming back from Abu Dhabi and Dubai and they had the shutdown and all my speaking engagements where I had to show up physically, they just were eliminated. Now I'm speaking from home. Now I'm able to speak virtually around the world, Hong Kong, South Africa, the UK, and I don't have to get on an airplane and my phone and my computer, they don't sneeze. People don't say, God bless you anymore when somebody sneezes. They say, hey! <laughs> they don't say, God bless you anymore. They say, can you get the hell away from me? <laughs> I'm sorry. Ooh, ooh. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, but <laughs> this is real. People don't say, God bless you anymore. They be looking like... You about to make blues by my mind up in here. Especially they take that mask off and sneeze. <laughs> this is a homely person's dream. They're getting more dates than ever before. <laughs> but I, I want you to think about your goals and dreams and, and listen to me. Listen to me, Linda. This is a great time. Yes, most people will never achieve their goals and greatness in life because they become victims of mass distractions. This is a time that finds something that you love, something that resonates with you, that you want to focus on, that you want to put effort on, and that you want to invest the time so that you can begin to recreate your life. So I want you to think about what that is and I'm going to share with you some steps on how to make that happen. Now, I have some guests with me that they're going to ask me some questions, Sandra and Tola and Erica. And I want you to also ask me some questions as well. 
But let me share with you what happened for me and why this is like, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's an interesting place that a lot of people don't realize there's some things that happen to you, but really ultimately you have a chance to reflect and look back at it and you realize they happen for you. When I lost my job in radio, that was a job that I loved. That was a job that not only did I love it, but I did it extremely well. And I was fired for being controversial, for doing editorials. I was in Columbus, Ohio. They called me Les Brown, the man about town. LB Triple P, Les Brown, your platter playing papa. There were none before me, and there will be none after me. Therefore, that makes me the one and only. I was bad back then. Come on now. <laughs> and I was fired. And I had to reinvent myself. I had to rethink my life. As we are told by the Jewish carpenter, throw your net on the other side. A lot of people are reflecting on their life right now and thinking about what's my next move. And I'm saying to you, in the midst of all of that, I'm encouraging you to develop a ritual for yourself. Because when, when life has just been snatched out from under you, and, and, and life catches you on the blind side, or you have to make some tough decisions of what direction that you want to take your life in, you take a hit. When it's emotionally and, 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 and physically and mentally draining. So you have to have a ritual. I have a ritual. Before I go to sleep at night, I think about, first of all, I'm thankful, Lord, for you bringing me through this day. And I think about what is it that I want to get out of the next day. And I write seven things down that I want to get out of the day. See, most people, when they wake up in the morning, they just want to get through the day. If you don't have an agenda for your life, you'll be a part of somebody else's agenda. So I'm encouraging you, before you go to sleep, think about it. What is it that I want to get out of my life tomorrow? What, what momentum can I create to move in the direction of my new dream, my new house, my new car, my new business. Think about that. Give some thought to that. And what are the, 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 the baby steps that can take? You know, they say that by the yard is hard, but inch by inch, anything is a cinch. And so break it down into manageable chunks of things that you can do that will help to create momentum in the direction of the new life that you're going to create for yourself. Here's something else. Monitor your intake. You don't want to just watch anything today. Our minds are being manipulated by algorithms. They know more about us now than we know about ourselves. This technology, this has never been available on the planet before. And big business, and politicians are using it to manipulate our thinking. And so you want to be careful about what you're watching. Why? Because even though those are powerful technological instruments that they're using to penetrate our minds, to hack our minds, they can only get through through the eyes and through the ears. So what I do I don't just watch anything. People say garbage in, garbage out. No. Garbage in, garbage stays and affects your thinking. And it, 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 it can motivate and inspire you to buy stuff that you don't even want. I, I don't even watch television at night because I would watch these infomercials and I was ordering everything. <laughs> Oh, one more thing. If you get, if you, if we, you get one more thing. If you get that, we're going to give you this and we're going to give you that. And I, yeah, I need this. I need, <laughs> no. Uh, and if you look at your phone, they got all kind of rabbit holes that they, they have something there that they know will catch, capture your attention. How to lose 40 pounds in one month. Oh, yeah, I want to know that. 
and then say, I'm going to tell you about that in seven minutes, but first, listen to this before they make me take this off because the doctors don't want you to know this. And I got to sit through all that craziness. Hey, listen, every day there's competition for our minds. You get over 5,000 advertising hits. So be ye not conformed to this world. Notice the word conform. How is it that we can prevent ourselves from being a conformist? And that is by monitoring. If you put yourself on a seven-day fast, listen to me, a seven-day fast, if you don't watch any television, if you don't listen to anything negative, if you don't watch and listen to the television or your computer, or your phone, and most people don't realize it, they look at their phones over 300 times a day. And you just discipline yourself. And I'll give you some things I want you to watch. Write this down. Les Brown speaking in the Georgia Dome. Why? Because over 87% of our self-talk is negative. I want you to also watch something else. It's possible. And another one. You deserve, in another one, getting unstuck. Why? Because if our thoughts, 87%, are negative, you want to crowd your mind with positive words so that you can overwhelm the negative things that we're picking up in the world. See, if you don't program your mind with positive things, it will be available and fill with negative thoughts that don't serve you. So no, you, 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 you want to be involved in the process of, of controlling your thoughts and what comes in. They did a study, people in the theater, and it's called subliminal advertising. They had a, a commercial come on, but you couldn't see it with the, the naked eye. It's called subliminal. It goes past the conscious mind to the subconscious mind. It says, get up and go get some popcorn. And 35% of the people did it. And they didn't even know why they were doing it. And that, that's the power of subliminal and algorithms, advertising, that, that, that they can affect your mind and you're not even aware. I'm not making this up. I want you to go and watch on Netflix, Social Dilemma. Social dilemma. When you see that, you'll wonder, oh, mm, now I see what's going on. One of my grandchildren said that it was talking about something that impacted her mind. And she had a, a, a vehement a disagreement with her sister. And what, what changed in, in terms of their position on this argument? Is what they were watching. We got to watch our kids. And our kids are going through a tough time right now. We got to step up, even if you don't have any children. Oh, your children are grown. We, we have to step up and help each other. I'm doing that because it's, it's not only emotionally stressful, however, it's also something that's causing many kids to shut down. Many kids have checked out. Say no, they're not paying any attention to the to the computer. They're not interested in school now, and distance learning and all of that, keeping a safe distance from their classmate when they go to school. Many of them just they can't handle it. If the adults can't handle it, if I leave the house because the walls are closing in on me and been in the house so long I start talking to the squirrels outside my windows. I had named a squirrel, I named him Tyrone. Hey, if I'm doing that, <laughs> you know, I've been here a minute. Come on, somebody. Just imagine what our kids are going through or what the teachers are going through. Many of them are quitting. Or what parents are going to. They're looking at their kids saying, you about to make me lose my mind. Up in here. Up in here. You about to make me act a fool if you don't sit your behind down behind that computer. I need some help, mama, on this problem I got here. I don't know what that is. I'm trying to work. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. It's a new day. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, if you have some questions, I'm, I'm willing to answer questions that you might ask. Or I might just say, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so so what question do you have? Do you have one, Erica? Yeah. Yes, Les. How do you reinvent yourself when things just didn't work out the way you had planned? What, where do you go? How do you reinvent yourself? Erica asked me, how do you reinvent yourself when, when something happens and you didn't plan it? You have to experiment and find out what is you. Marion White said in life, when you don't have enough courage, that you have outgrown that, and it's time to move. Okay. What they did to me? It's back. Just like your phone. We're back. Okay, it's okay. Oh, we had an interruption that we got a hot spot. <laughs> okay. I don't know where where it cut out. Can y'all tell me? You re reinvented yourself. You reinvented yourself. I reinvented myself. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> I, like that. I, like that. I reinvented myself. When I got fired from radio, I realized something that Marion White said. He said, in life, when you don't have enough courage or insight to know that you have outgrown a situation and it's time to move on, life will move on you. And so I had to find a, another way to use my voice to earn money and to do something that I love to do, something that would give my life a sense of meaning. Something that would give my life a, a sense of living a life of contribution. Harsh man said we should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. And so I looked at myself and I had to rethink. And, and someone suggested to me, man, you ought to speak. I, I just couldn't see myself doing that. I used to go to all type of motivational events and I'd see various motivational speakers, Zig Ziglar, Dr. Norman, Vincent Peale, and Robert Schuller, and Wayne Dyer. And I just, I looked at them, I, I admired them, Miles Monroe. I just didn't think I could do what they were doing. But sometimes somebody can see something in you that you don't see in yourself. Sometimes you have to believe in somebody's belief in you until your belief kicks in. And that's what happened for me. Mike Williams, who wrote the book, The Road to Your Best Stuff, that he said, Brownie, you can do the same thing those other guys are doing. And I admired him as a speaker. I said, can you teach me how to do it? He said, yes. Are you willing to put your money where your mouth is? I said, absolutely. And so... I did, and it has made all the difference in the world. It made a, a major difference in how I was showing up in life. I was able to do something I enjoyed doing, provide an impact, and made changes in, in thousands, literally millions of people. For the 17th, I turned 76. Who does that? 76. I used to think people in their 40s were old. Now I feel like I was shining shoes at the Lord's Supper. <laughs> and to leverage my story so that I would be able to transform an audience individually and collectively. And the rest is history. Now, what I need to do is get me a service. I don't have to worry about when I'm broadcasting. I lose the signal. This doesn't work for me. No, you're shaking no. No, I don't want to do this anymore. No, no. Let's, let's get something that we don't have to worry about this. There's got to be something available. If you know there's something available that I can purchase that will stop my broadcast from being interrupted. You'll see me every day. 
Yeah, this doesn't work. It's been happening quite a lot. It's just too much. It's too much. No, I can't get my flow going like that. <laughs> Someone says you need a gig speed Wi-Fi. A gig oh. speed? That's what someone's saying. Wi-Fi? Yeah. What's it? Yeah, That's do you know like what that a really is? really fast connection. Like Say one, it again? It's like a really fast internet connection. Okay. One gigabyte per second, which is really fast. Okay. Wi-Fi extender, someone else says. That's what yeah. Wi-Fi extender, are y'all writing this down? Yeah, we have we have a Wi-Fi extender currently. We have we currently have a Wi-Fi extender, mm-hmm. and we're still having interruptions. Correct. Okay, so what will prevent the interruptions? The port- someone said Zoom. <laughs> We've it's done good. Zoom. No, yeah, it'll, Zoom it'll can't provide. Yeah, <laughs> it's the internet it's service maybe provider. A mobile, mobile, a mobile call hotspot. Jerry. Call Jerry. Mobile yeah, mobile hotspot. Food. Huh? Yeah, mobile hotspot. That's the best solution. Mobile hotspot. Mobile hotspot. Where do you get that from? Uh, Verizon, T-Mobile. 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 Yeah. Okay. Well, why didn't you get that? Why are we uh, sitting up here without that? Yeah. I'll, I'll work with Jerry to get this set up. He's like the network guy, so. No, he didn't know. He's not, that's not his, no, he's just trying to f- contribute and figure it out. Yeah. But, but that's not his expertise. <laughs> Are we still live? Yeah. <laughs> I, hey, we still live. We're I still just, li- <laughs> get a solution. Yes. Hello, I want a solution. Help us out. But so I can talk to my peeps. Yeah. <laughs> I know they're happy to see you for the first time on Instagram. This is my first time on Instagram and Murphy's Law said, I got you. Murphy's Law said, if anything can go wrong, it will. And at the worst possible moment. Come on, Murphy. Give a brother a break. This is my first day. You could at least, at least wait two or three days. But... A, a call came through. No way. Yes, it did. Wow. I just pushed up. That's Murphy's Law right there. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's 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 go with let's go back to the iPad. We don't have to worry about phone calls on that. But there's got to be a better way. Any other suggestions on what we can do so that we don't get Poor internet connection. Is there something else that I can purchase that will keep it strong and independent? Okay, that's all right. Okay. We'll get the mobile hotspot. The mobile hotspot. Let's go get that. I wait. Let's go get it. Oh, it takes time to set up. So it the, takes time to set up a mobile hotspot. Yeah, the, it only you know, takes man. three days to go to the moon. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 so T-Mobile is going to mail it to us and it's a device that they control the internet as opposed to uh, Xfinity or Comcast and so it's a completely separate connection so if Comcast goes down T-Mobile says I got your back so it's our backup we'll get that so we can order that now absolutely we'll get that ordered so Somebody said, I think it's the owners of IG Hayden. IG. <laughs> what did it say? What? I think it's the owners of IG Hayden. Yep, yeah, the, the Hayden. owners of IG Hayden. The Hayden owners. The Hayden owners. <laughs> the Hayden, owners. The Hayden break, on the motivator. We're breaking the algorithm. <laughs> we're breaking the algorithm. Yeah. Yes. All right. Let, let, me, let me speak from this place. I want you to think about your goals and dreams. And I'm not a religious person. I'm a spiritual person. Religious people are afraid of going to hell. Spiritual people have been there. And so I want to drop something on you before I stop. Here's, here's what hell is. When you die and you meet the person that you were supposed to become, Hmm. Ow! Oh, behave when you die. And you meet the person that you were supposed to become. Because most people, the word sin comes from an Aramaic word, metal, means falling short of the mark. Most people know if they had their life to live over again, they could have done more than what they've done thus far. And I'm number one in that category. That, that we, we, we don't 
do the things that we have within us for a variety of reasons. We, we learn and pick up things in life through conversation, through observation, and through indoctrination. And so we, we haven't, for the most part, been trained to become entrepreneurs. And we haven't been, been trained on how to think. We've been trained what to think. You don't tell thinking people Columbus discovered America and the Indians were here. How do you discover something already occupied? That's like I go out into the parking lot and discover your car. I better discover those car payments. <laughs> no! No! And, and so, so it's very important that we spend time working on ourselves, doing self-discovery, understanding the meaning and the purpose of our lives, Answering the question, why am I here? I remember a guy, he was going across Europe, a friend of mine, just trying to find himself. And, and soldiers at one place, they boarded the train and asked the sleeping passengers, why are you here? Who are you? And where you are going? And, and I would ask you, why, why, why are you listening to me now? And where have you been? And where are you going with your life? Because knowing that, Mark Twain said, the two most important days in our lives, the day that we are born and the day we realize why we were born. Here's what I know about you and I don't know you. I can't even see you. You have something special. You have greatness in you. But when you live in a culture where you've been marginalized, when you live in an environment that you've been belittled, if you are around people who are pigeons and you were born to be an eagle, you can forget who you are. And, and so part of beginning to discover yourself is just taking time to think to rethink your life, to get still, to spend some quiet time with you, to journal. What is it that gives your life a sense of meaning? Uh, something that Dr. Howard Thurman said. He said, don't ask what the meaning of life is. He said, ask what is the meaning of your life? How are you living? How are you showing up? What impact are you contributing to make a difference on the planet. You know, that most people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65. You were born for greatness. And when you're pursuing your greatness, you don't know what your limits are. So you act like you don't have any. Simba, come on Lion King, Simba, you're more than that which you have become. And you are, and you know it. You know it in your heart of hearts, but your mind is now arguing with me. But last, I don't even have two dimes to rub together. I'm waiting on my stimulus check, and they haven't, guys, they haven't mailed it to me yet. Come on, now, that little bit of money ain't going to stimulate you. It's already gone. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Come on. I know you could use it. It ain't going to stimulate you. Come on. No. <laughs> okay. You have the power to create more. Don't leave your hands in the, the politicians' hands. Come on. No. No, 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 no. You have greatness in you. Even if you're going through a tough time right now, Willie Jolly was right. A setback is a setup for a comeback. You have comeback power. I've got a saying, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. Yes. You have comeback power. You have the ability to recreate yourself. This, whatever you're going through, it's, it's, it's not the end of the story. No. No. It, it's, <laughs> as, as Star Baba Toon would say, you got some more stories of greatness in you. And there is a power and a presence in you. 
Dr. Howard Thurman Comfort, sir. He said, there's something in each and every one of you that waits and listens to the voice of the genuine in yourself. It will be perhaps the only guide you will ever have or hear. And if you cannot hear it, all of your life, your days will be spent on the ends of strings that somebody else pulls. And the reason that you're watching me because somewhere in your heart of hearts, where your heart is, there your treasure is also, that you have said, I don't want anyone to pull my strings. No, I want to take back my power, be in charge of my life. And you have the power to do that. You have something special. You have greatness in you. Yes. Now, some of you would love to speak. Let me share this with you. I want you to be hungry to speak. I don't, I, I'm looking for people who are hungry to speak and, and allow me to coach you, to pull that, 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 that story out of you. There's a reason that Steve Jobs said, the storyteller is the most powerful person in the world. The only way that I was able to be a disc jockey and a state representative and then had my own talk show, highest rated, fastest canceled talk show in the history of television. But at least I had one. <laughs> and, and speak on platforms around the world. Been doing it now, 52 years. And now I'm teaching others how to do it. If you are hungry to speak, if you want to be the best, got to be trained by the best. It's not true because I said it, but I said it because it's true. <laughs> I want you to go to HungryToSpeak.com. Let me work with you. HungryToSpeak.com. Let me bring it out. HungryToSpeak.com. You see, you're pregnant with a baby story right now, and the, and the water has been broken. Let's, let's give birth to it. Because that which you've been sitting on, you can lift others up. I want you to go to HungryToSpeak.com right now. Go right now. Fill out the form and, and see what the program is about and get the gold package. Because when you are willing to invest in yourself, how I think it was one great financial billionaire, Warren Buffett, he said that the most important investment you can make is in yourself. He graduated from Harvard. He invested in a communications course. Yes. Your ability to communicate, communication power, to make a point, to negotiate, to make a sale. It's major. I can teach you how to do that. Also, what allowed me to become successful, how to create an experience with your voice, with your story. That made me stand out from other speakers. Most speakers, even to this day, they're governed by the Dale Carnegie course, which is a great course. They teach, tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them and then tell them what you told them. They're scripted, memorized scripts. My mentor, Mike Williams, said, Brownie, never let what you want to say get in the way of what your audience wants to hear. Conduct communications intelligence. Find out what they need mm, in all that getting, get understanding. And so I teach you how to take your story and custom design it to meet the needs and exceed the, their level of expectation. I, I teach you on how to create an experience. Oliver Wendell Holmes said that once a man or woman's mind has been expanded with an idea, concept, or experience, and you touch their heart and ignite their spirit, they become, as Mother Teresa would say, a pencil in the hand of God and start writing a new chapter in their lives. Go to HungryToSpeak.com. If you can hear me in your heart, this is not for everybody now. This is not for everybody. I don't want to work with everybody. They say I got the Midas touch. You know why? Because I don't touch everything. <laughs> so, y'all have any other questions for me? Yes. Tola, you have any more? I do, actually. I saw one in the chat. Tola saw he wasn't in the chat. What is your question? 
the question I have is, as a speaker, how do you pick the topics you talk about? Do you research um, the most requested topics, or do you... As a speaker, she asked me, how do you pick the topic that you're going to talk about? You pull it out of your experience or something that you observe, something that grabs your attention. This is the attention economy. And so you can find something that you observe that or something that made a difference in your life. Marianne Williamson, she wrote a book called The Return to Love. She read a, a book called it was, mm, it escapes me right now. This book that she, she wrote a book about a book. And she built her career on that. A Course in Miracles. That was the book, A Course in Miracles. She read that book. That book changed her life. And she gives speeches on that. And every time she opens her mouth, she said, according to A Course in Miracles. And then she would say whatever it is that she got from that. It was written by a lady named Helen. Helen, she was an agnostic. And Helen, uh, before she died, she refused to allow her name to be put on the book, A Course in Miracles. She died. And, and people love that book to this day. And it's been promoted by Marianne Williamson, and that built her speaking career. So it could be something you experience or something that you observe that touched you deeply and that that inspired you and, and something that you have experienced at a deep level and you decided that you want to help other people who might be dealing with the same situation that you've been dealing with. Tola? So the question that I have, um, I just, the one that I was kind of thinking about earlier is what would you tell your younger self today? What will I see? He said, what would you tell the younger Les Brown today? Get started. Do what you can where you are. Now. I put it off speaking for 14 years. Here's something I want you to think about. Put things off for tomorrow that you don't mind dying in you today. Michael Jackson said, this is it. He didn't know it was. Frank Sinatra said, live each day as if it were your last, because one day it will be. And so I put it off for 14 years because I don't have a college education, because I don't work, I never worked for a major corporation. And I just didn't think, who would want to pay me to speak to them? I don't have anything going for me. I was born in an abandoned building on a floor in a poor section of Miami, Florida. I'm one of seven children that my mother took in as foster kids and then she adopted us. Who, who would want to hire me to speak? Have you ever thought about something you wanted to do and you talk yourself out of it? That's what I did. There's an African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside, can do us no harm. And so for 14 years, I was just a spectator. I just go and sit in the audience and watch speakers. And I remember one day a guy was talking and he was talking to me. I mean, to tell you, it was, it's one of those special moments that I was squirming in my seat. He's giving his speech. I didn't know this dude from anybody. And he stopped. He said, there's somebody here who should be up here holding this microphone, speaking like me, helping people. That's what you love to do. That's who you are. And you convinced yourself that you can't do it. And then he went on speaking. And then he stopped again. And he started looking at over the audience, I'm hiding behind somebody. I said, is this guy looking for me? He said, this just dropped in my spirit. He said, you know who you are. I'm standing in your dream. And the reason that you're not standing up here holding this microphone and you're seated out there squirming in your seat, I represent the thoughts 
you have rejected for yourself. Whoa, that was a punch in the gut. I got up and I, I ran out, stepped over people, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And I ran to a pay phone. You can make a call for 10 cents. The millennials don't know about that. I call Mike Williams, my mentor and coach to this day. Mike, yes, Ronnie, what's happening? Calm down. I'm not rejecting myself anymore. Do you hear me? Brownie, calm down. No, I'm not rejecting myself anymore. I'm going to speak, man. My mother has breast cancer. I promised her I'll take care of her. She won't go in a nursing home. I'm not rejecting myself anymore. I can do this. And we, we turn our lives around because of people and projects and experiences. And that guy, I don't even know his name. That guy, when he spoke on that day and gave that speech, he touched me in a special way. And since then, I've had people say, I've been listening to you since I was a little boy or a little girl, but my parents used to listen to you in the car with cassettes. Millennials don't know about cassettes. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. A guy, he came up to me, man, I listened to you since I was a little boy. He looked older than Methuselah. I'm saying, is that right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Whatever. <laughs> Listen, if you like changing people's lives, if you like living a life of meaning, if you want to, as, as Miles Monroe would say, rob the cemetery of your voice, of your story, of your contribution, if you're ready to do that, I want you to go to hungrytospeak.com. Go there. Get the gold package. Invest in yourself. Like Warren Buffett said, it's the most important investment you can make. This guy's a billionaire. He's got billions of dollars in real estate, billions of dollars in the stock market. You, you are the money. Invest in you. The average person spends less than $14 a year on their personal growth and development. Develop your mind. Dr. Carter G. Woodson, come forth, sir. He said, if you can determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. He said, if you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, you never have to order him to go to the back door. He'll go without being told. And if there's no door, his very nature will demand one. Come on, somebody. Well... <laughs> Life is for living, laughing, and loving. God is love, and he who dwelleth in God dwelleth in love, and God in them. You have something special. You have greatness in you. I believe that we all have the talent and the ability and the willingness to do whatever it takes to take our lives to the next level. And sometimes we just, we just have the rug snatched out from under us, like the coronavirus. It's, it's, it's unlike anything that we've ever seen. Sometimes I just hope, is this a bad dream? If so, let me wake up and pew, it's gone like a miracle. Remember 45 said that, yeah, whatever. And it's character building. It's character building on a whole other level with steroids. What questions do people have? Somebody from Turkey just said hello. Somebody said her story scares her. How would you address that? She, somebody said their story, their story 
scare you. Listen to me. Your story came through you, but the story is not for you. The story is for the audience. The story, if it scares you, you think you're the only one that has gone through it? Somebody needs that story to be freed up, to be liberated. As Luce would say, somebody needs to hear that from your mouth. Each voice, I believe, there's a frequency behind it. There's some people that's going to hear me, some people that's going to hear Sandra, some people that will hear Tola, some people that will hear you, that will hear Erica. There's a frequency. That's why the Jewish carpenter said, my sheep shall hear my voice. He who has ear, let him hear. You have a voice. And see, our parents give us our physical appearance, but God gave us our voice. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word dwelt among men. Listen to me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, whatever we desire, will be added unto you. And they demanded, when shall the kingdom of God come? And he said, the kingdom of God cometh not by observation. They shall say, it's neither low there or low here. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Listen to me. The kingdom of God is voice activated. When you speak, when somebody's in a dark place, when you speak, you bring them out into the light. When you speak and somebody's feeling powerless and helpless and, 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 and feel like giving up, when you speak, you will activate stories of greatness in them. When you speak, somebody's decided to take their life, you will talk them back from the edge and realize that their life, life is God's gift to us and how we live our lives is our gift to God. No. Don't take that voice to the cemetery. There's no time to be a wimp. Be of good courage. You are made in the likeness and image of God. You've been given authority and dominion over everything. That's not just something to be written or said over everything on the face of the earth. However, we will never exercise authority and dominion over our lives until we exercise authority and dominion over what we are not. Dr. Carter G. Woodson, I got to call on you right now, brother. If you could determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. If you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, you never have to order him to go to the back door. He'll go without being told. And if there's no door, his very nature will demand one. We're talking about the coronavirus. I want some people to help me to get the virus out of our kids' minds. HIV. Hood infected virus, AIDS, addiction to incarceration and death syndrome. Oh, and there's one more. We got to eliminate not just the pandemic, but the podemic. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that a preach. Come on now, my brother. Come on, the podemic. Oh, that's been with us for a long time. Come on, I know about the podemic. I used to eat mayonnaise sandwiches. Hmm. <laughs> oh, behave, whatever. <laughs> go to hungrytospeak.com. I'm going to get that story out of you. If you're hungry, if you know there's something in there, let me get to you. Oh, just give me some time to work with you. Mm -hmm. When I get through with you, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you. Oh, behave. Whatever. <laughs> Y'all got some questions for me? Let me see. What, what are they asking? Are they, they saying anything else? They say, how do I overcome procrastination? 
How do you overcome procrastination? Here's how you overcome it. Get busy and keep moving and don't stop. Even if you fail again and again and again, you will fail your way to success. Procrastination is nourished by fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and spirit of love and, and of a sound mind. Keep moving. That's how you overcome it. And, and keep striking again and again and again. Even a broke clock is right twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, well, uh, the Tyrone was getting to slap that one. Okay, what's the next question? <laughs> Y'all got any questions out there? This is my first time on Instagram. I'm having a good time. I don't know if you having a good time, but I'm having Someone a good has time. A question. How do I stay positive in the pandemic surrounded by negative people? Oh, she asked, how do I stay positive in the pandemic? And I'm around a lot of negative peepers. Here's how you do it. Let go or be dragged. Let them go. Can I change them? No. It's a full-time job changing yourself. I tried to help my twin brother lose weight, and I gained 25 pounds. <laughs> Let go. Listen to me every day. Take time for you. That's what you do. Just make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort. There are two types of relationships. There are toxic relationships. There are nourishing relationships. Toxic relationships, they drain you. They turn your hair gray overnight. The average woman in the toxic environment gains around 45 pounds. Come on, somebody. When you go for a walk with someone, this is Sidney Poitier from his book called The Measure of a Man. He said, something happens without being spoken. He said, either you adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to? Let them go. What fellowship does light have with darkness? None. Let them go. Life is like an elevator. The higher you go up, you have to stop and let some people off. Let them go. Family members and friends, let them go so you can grow. Hmm. I don't know less. You know what this is? The world's smallest violin playing the world's saddest song <laughs> because you're a coward. <laughs> You got to be courageous in this thing called life. And, and courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is the willingness to act in spite of the fear. You were born to be a winner. But in order to make it, you got to be hungry. People that are hungry operate out of the thinking, all you can do is all you can do, and all you can do is enough. But make sure you do all you can do. People that are hungry, they believe always strive to get on top in life because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. People that are hungry take no prisoners and eat the wounded, and they start at the ears like Mike Tyson. <laughs> oh, V.A., you didn't go there, did you? Yes. <laughs> You're having too much fun. It's just too much. That's Jerry Jackson. It's just too much. I'm Yahuda. It's just too much. <laughs> Another fan wants to know, what is your morning routine? My morning routine. I'm so glad you asked. When I first opened my eyes, I said all things work together for good. For those who like God and for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. And then I say, Lord, whatever I face today, together you and I can handle it. And then I review the seven things I wrote the night before, what I want to get out of the day. And then I write down seven things that I am grateful for. I am grateful that I am conquering fourth stage cancer because of God's grace and mercy. I'm grateful that I have a voice. I'm grateful at 76 that I'm 
still relevant and I'm making a difference. I'm grateful for my health for my family and friends. I'm grateful for the calling on my life and the people that can hear my voice. Thank you, Lord, for making this the best day of my life. As Orrin Hudson, who teach young people how to become strategic thinkers with chess, you ask him, say, Orrin, Orrin, how, how you doing? He says, best day of my life. I said, how's that possible? He said, try missing one. I said, okay, it's the best day of my life, too. <laughs> yes, that's my routine. Next question, please. One person said, how do I know it's my dream? If it's in your heart, if it's something somebody asks, how do I know if it's my dream? If it's something that you, you feel that it's you, something Sometimes you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. Ask the people around you. They'll let you know. And then go for it. Get some help with it. Get a coach and monetize it. It's the time of the entrepreneur. The 40-40 plan. and can create a global business and run it from our phone virtually or from our home virtually. This is a great time to be alive. This is the era where Did 90% of the American public earn working for three years? Hmm. They don't pay you by the hour. They pay you for the value you bring to the hour. Study full. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Ronald Reagan didn't have any gray hair. My mama passed at 89. She didn't have no gray hair either. Mm, that's why. That's my secret. I don't leave home without it. I got three eyelashes that are gray, but I'm not going there. I'm in Atlanta. They got eyelashes.
fashion class, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Now, yeah. somebody said, I ruined my hair. I hate myself. What would you say to somebody that says, I hate myself? Somebody said they hate themselves. Here's what I have to say to you. Rethink your life. What you're doing when you say you hate yourself, you're spitting in the face of God. You're saying you hate your life. Life is God's gift to you and to me. So you're spitting in his face saying, I hate what you gave me. I don't want to be here anymore. You're spitting in God's face. That's why the saying is, the fort, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. People who hate themselves are underlings because they don't work on themselves, because they don't know themselves, because they have not leveraged their talents, abilities, and skills, because they have not invested the time to answer the question God asked Adam, where are you? That was not a question of location. That was a question of where are you in terms of your thinking? Where are you? You've made some bad decisions. That does not make you a bad person. You've made some... Hmm, no, no, no. Don't you ever let those words come out of your mouth again. Hmm, yeah, you go to hunger to speak. You need to be in our community. I'm going to work with you personally. But you need to be born again. And I can bring some rest special holy oil for you. <laughs> Come on, I'm just playing. But I'm serious. <laughs> okay, what's the next question? Okay, somebody said, I know you said just start, but how do I make my voice heard, relevant, in a market that is saturated? Somebody said, just how do I make my voice heard in a market that's already saturated? That's what they told me. <laughs> that's what they told me. You're listening to people who are at your level. Don't listen to them. They are broke. Don't listen to broke people because you will take on their lifestyle. Never let someone tell you what the odds are, especially if they're not going against the odds. When I train you with my endorsement, with my exposure for you and market you to my database and to the world. I wish I had that when I started out. You will be known. That's why I've created my speaking summits. That's why I've created my training. You go to HungryToSpeak.com and get the gold package. I guarantee you, you'll be known. Before the year is out. Well, I'll give you an investment back. Give it back to you. Guaranteed. Just said that before the world. Hello? How could you do that? How could you do that? Because I got it like that. Hmm. <laughs> I'm having too much fun. This is too much. <sighs> What's your next question, please? I wasn't busy today, so I went down to a mental institution and I just asked them, would they let some patients ask me some questions? And they're kind of slow, but they're doing a good job. <laughs> Another person is still asking like three times about how do I know this is the right career for me? You don't know. That's why we're taught to walk by faith and not by sight. Faith not tested can't be trusted. You don't know. That's why we're taught to call forth those things be not as though they were. 
So leap and grow your wings on the way down. You don't know. You've got to become a risk taker. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you can't become your best. And if you can't become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? I like what Helen Keller said. She said, life is short and unpredictable. Eat the dessert first. Come on, take a chance on you. Dreams die in comfort zones in the pallbearers. A negative mindset, doubt, fear, uncertainty, anxiety. Those are the pallbearers of your dreams in your comfort zone. But outside of your comfort zone, that's where the work starts. Outside of your comfort zone, that's where you pursue your dreams and you'll meet a person that you will never discover in your comfort zone. Next question, please. I hear crickets. <laughs> well, what we can actually do is we can invite someone to ask you a question live. If y'all have some, yeah, you can. Somebody can ask me a question live. Help me do that, Toby. Somebody said, "Can you become a millionaire by working nine to five? <laughs> Lord, I want to. I want to cast every. <laughs> somebody asked the question: Can you become a millionaire by working nine to five? Lord, I want to cast every retarded demon out the questionnaire. This person has a job: the journey of the broke. And they asked the question: Can they become a millionaire working a job? I want you to heal them. I got some hot oil because some oil you don't want to make warm. I want to sprinkle them right now virtually and say no. Next question, please. We have um, a request from Kenny Me Kitchen who would like to go live. So Kenny Me Kitchen, we're going to add you to the live stream right now. Um okay. All right. Kenny Me Kitchen, did you get the request to join? All right, if, if she's not ready, we can take another request. Is there anyone okay. else that would like to join the live stream and ask a question? Please send a request and we will get to it. Listen, in the meantime, I want you to go to hungrytospeak.com. My, my, my team will vet you to see if it's a good fit. I don't want to work with just anybody. I want to work with people that are hungry. I was hungry to speak. I wanted to buy my mother a home. I, I wanted to be my own boss. I'm not mentally fit to work for somebody for the rest of my life. The life that I'm living, I designed it. You want to live your life in such a way that when in the future you show up, your future self would say, I'm so glad you made that decision. My future self said that. Thank you, Les Brown for taking a chance on me. Now you get to meet me, the real you. Hmm. This thing called life. What a wonderful world. What else, what else they're asking? Well, let's take the questions. If we don't know. Yeah, let's see. One person said, what should I do if I keep failing? What should you do? Should you keep failing? Get some help. Ask for help. Not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. And ask for help and don't stop until you get it. When you go to hungrytospeak.com, we have created a community. Why? Because all of us hit those spots in life like Einstein. He said, the thinking that has brought me this far has created some problems that this thinking can't solve. Your best thinking has brought you where you are. When you come into a community of collaborative, achievement-driven, supported relationships, you will have breakthroughs. If you knew how to do it, you would have done it. None of us make it by ourselves. None of us, including you. Stop frustrating yourself and invest in yourself and become a part of a community where you have relationships with people that lift you up, people that have done what you want to do, people 
that will hold you accountable, people that will inspire and motivate you, people that will help you, people that's behind doors that you want to get into, people who've done what you've done already and stuck a fork in it and get it done in 21. That's how. I'm on fire. <laughs> what is that, Erica? What books do you recommend? I recommend Mike Williams' book, The Road to Your Best Stuff. The Road to Your Best Stuff. That's what I recommend. And my new book, which is entitled you got to be hungry, the greatness within, to win. And there's another by Luce Krill. But I'm going to do an interview with her on her book. i got a series of them, people that we're training that have some powerful life-altering books. But those are just two right now. Okay, well, people are probably watching sports now or pornography or something else more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that you've so, enjoyed. Uh, I have a very low self-esteem. How do I change that? You say that you have, first of all, stop claiming that you have low self-esteem. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Death and life is in the tongue. You're speaking death on your dreams when you say that. Watch what you say about yourself. I want you to watch Les Brown speaking in the Georgia Dome every day. I want you to watch the video on YouTube, not only Les Brown speaking in the Georgia Dome, but watch the one called It's Possible. If you watch those two every day for 90 days without missing, I guarantee you, it will change your life. It will change your life. You got to crowd out all those negative thoughts, things that you've experienced, things that, that, that manifest in you when you've been abused or, or marginalized or disrespected or taken advantage of or your environment that's in you. Mm -mm. You got to flush that stuff out. You got to strip that stuff away. Okay, somebody said, I'm a financial advisor and I try to help middle-class families to create financial wealth. Um, how do I get them to even sit down and listen, like family and friends? This person said they're a financial advisor. How do they get family and friends to sit down and listen to talk to them? Your family and friends, that's your warm market. Write this down. TTP, talk to people. <laughs> and if that doesn't work, write this down. TTP. MP, talk to more people. <laughs> and you will get customers. Hello? There's no magic. Talk to people. Practice the three yard rule. Anybody get within three feet of you? Talk to them about your business. And you're going to, through the law of probability, there's some people out there with your name on them who are looking for your service, who will buy your service and recommend other people. I know this to be true. Got to be hungry. TTP, talk to people. TTMP, talk to more people. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, behave. I'm called Tyrone on you. Okay. okay. Tyrone said I need to land the plane. Go ahead. What? <laughs> this person said, what if, you, what if you're not a hungry type? 
of person. What if you don't have a hustler spirit, a go-getter mentality, a salesperson drive? What if you're not that type of a person? And Somebody said, what if you don't have a go-getter type, a hungry type, a salesperson type? What about that? People who don't have a hunger and a hustle type and a sales type have skinny children. <laughs> <laughs> they get evicted. They face foreclosures. They work on jobs that they hate. So guess what? You need to be born again. <laughs> That's why Paul said, I must die daily. Yes, because that part of you must die to give birth to who you need to be in order to make it today. To live life on your terms, not to survive. What it takes to survive and what it takes to live is being flexible, adaptable, and a willingness to learn to reinvent yourself. Get over yourself and do what you need to do to peel away the mediocre behavior and mindset and attitude that you have so that you can live the life here in my father glorify that ye bear much fruit you're put here to bear much fruit stop being mickey mouse come on <laughs> now somebody asked how can i gift the program to somebody else what a wonderful question how can you gift the program to someone else? You can. Just, just text me at lesbrown at hungrytospeak.com. The person that you'd like to gift it to. Just email me at lesbrown at hungrytospeak.com. And we'll work it out and make it possible. That's very kind of you. Love, happiness, and inspiration of perfumes. You can't. Sprinkle on others without getting a few drops on yourself. That person is going to thank you for that. Listen, Tyrone was asking me. You haven't met my friend Tyrone. Tyrone's a squirrel. I speak squirrelly. I'm bilingual. She said, land the plane. I've had such a wonderful time. This is my first day. My first day on Instagram. We had some interruptions, but... I've had a wonderful time. Can you tell I'm happy? <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you so much for listening. We're here because of God's grace and mercy. And it's a great time to be alive. A lot of stuff has happened. A lot of people have empty pockets, broken hearts, and failures and setbacks living in anxiety, fear, depression, and loneliness. God is still in charge. He's still in charge. I stand on, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that we envision for ourselves will be added unto us. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established in all thy ways. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Expect for things to get better. You're going to go through some stuff. Think it not strange that you face the fiery furnaces of this world. You will not, you might. You will have tribulations. But it's okay. Shula was right, tough times never last, but tough people do. And I'm right, life knocked you down, try and land on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. You got to be hungry. <laughs> Bye for now. I love you, as George Wallace, the comedian, would say, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Tola? You can end it now. <laughs>